10 famous faces are going on an epic journey. It's 2015, but not for long. They're travelling into the past. This is an historical circus. With no idea where or when they're headed. Wow. <laughs> Wake up in another place, in another era. Oh, my goodness! Exciting. They've been told nothing in advance. Do you know, I've got absolutely no idea what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, I've never had a costume fitting, blindfolded. So it's all a total surprise. Oh, wow. They're leaving the 21st century behind to crash land into six different moments in British history. What are we? We're early, early. 1796. Welcome to 1930. Oh, wow. wow. They'll be stripped of their celebrity status. Oh, no, we are. We're servants. Thrust into testing environments. Where's the food? It's coming! Oh, I don't shout. Pulling these things in. Ah! It is really hard work. And thrown to the bottom of the pile. Shut up and listen instead of arguing! Can they survive everything ah! history has to throw at them? Oh, this is bad. <sighs> Calm down, Fern. We'll sunk the boat. Please! <laughs> you can't be joking! That's horrific. They are... The Time Crashers. My goodness. Last time, the Time Crashers began their journey at an Elizabethan manor house. We're the help. We are the help. Working for the nobility. Where's the loud fellow? Loud fellow? I just think he doesn't like me face. While half were serving staff... I mean, this incessant bowing and protocol. <laughs> The rest slaved in the kitchen. This is grim. This is grim. That smells of urine. <laughs> After two days of gruelling work... That is the weirdest thing. <laughs> ..they delivered a grand Elizabethan feast. Well done. You did a superb job. medieval fortress in Derbyshire is about to relive its glory days. Oh, look at that! The Time Crashers are landing in the golden age of chivalry. Oh, this is good, yes, yeah, like a knight's tale. Hear ye, lords, ladies, we make known to you that a global joust will be performed here today. Jermaine, we woke up in the pub. Do you think we had a good night? It was not uh, yeah. Good morrow, gentlemen. The ten time crashers have no idea where... It reminds me of... Kansas. <laughs> ..or when they are. What is this, then? This is medieval, isn't it? This is some tented village waiting for a battle. Having started off in Tudor times, they've gone further back to the reign of Elizabeth I's great-grandfather. The year is 1468. Edward IV is on the throne and England is enjoying a brief respite from the bloody Wars of the Roses. <laughs> Look like goblins. Oh, my God. <laughs> in this time of peace, a testosterone fueled society found a way to recreate the drama of the battlefield turning war games into a sporting spectacle. The Joust. This was a world dominated by violent young men. Take King Edward. He was a warrior, he took the throne by the time he was 19, and he was undefeated in battle. Jousts like this were a way for his young knights to flex their military muscles, and they provided entertainment. The Time Crashers have been split into two groups. Hey! <laughs> the Blacks. Hello, hello. 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 And the Reds. We have another. <laughs> to help fit into life in the 15th century... I've got a book, yeah. ..each group has a Time Crashers guide. 
actor Keith Allen takes charge of the Reds. Welcome to 1468. Oh, we've gone back even further then. Yep. You are now <laughs> all squires. We're squires. Okay. In the retinue of Sir Henry Red. You will be responsible for readying your knight and his horses for a joust. You are now in direct competition with the other time oh. fashions. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you something, I couldn't have wished for a better team myself. <laughs> Joining Keith are weightlifter Zoe Smith, Hollywood actress Kirsty Alley, socialite Meg Matthews, and Olympic gold medalist Greg Rutherford. I'm a big medieval fan. Since I was a kid, I used to read books about knights and jousting and everything else. And for me to actually sort of semi live it now is, is a bit of a, a boy a dream. In the black camp, comedian Chris Ramsey weighs up the competition. We're against them. They're squires and they've got a knight, and we're squires and we've got a knight. And Working alongside Chris are breakfast news anchor Louise Minchin, TV presenter Fern Britton, footballer Jermaine Genus, and actor Charlie Condu. We all know each other now, so it'll be quite interesting that we're suddenly being set against each other. And of course, they've got two Olympians on their team, and we've got Chris on ours. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. Medieval England was a man's world. You are now all... <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I just We're all men. Squires came from good households, entering service as boys of around seven years old. As squires could hope to one day become knights themselves, all the women have become men. Kirsty is delighted. I'm actually happy to be a man because my status would not be this high if I weren't a man. Squires were the most important part of a knight's support team known as the retinue. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On your feet. Keeping them in check was the job of the marshal. Yes, sir. Don't call me sir, call me master. 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 Good morning. Ah, our squire. Your task for today is to prepare him and his horses for a joust to take place later this afternoon. Now, the thing about a joust is it's not just a competition of physical abilities. This is judged on appearance. That means the rider, his armour, the horse, weaponry, and the retinue. And that is you lot. If we win, you will be rewarded. If we lose, you get nothing. We'll win. We are now going to meet your new master. Follow me. Morning, Sir Henry. Morning, Sir Henry. Sir Henry. My lord, if it please you, I'd like to introduce you to your new retinue members. Thank you, Master Adam. Helping me navigate life in late medieval England is social historian and archaeologist Dr Cassie Newland. The bedrock of the feudal system are the knights. They are the enforcers. They are the muscles sent in to sort out all the little political skirmishes, or if someone's getting out of line, you send your knights in. These guys are the blunt end of the feudal system. They are killing machines. Killing machine he may be, but Fern is happy to pledge her allegiance. So John, oh, yes, he is. I mean, I'm a roughy, toughy squire, but you know, I could see that a maid might find him attractive. He has a nice manner, lovely hair. Louise. Yes, master. I assume you can read. Yes, master. Right, turn around, face these people, read it out to them. This indenture witnesses that Sir John has agreed to take into his service Louise, who freely promises to obey his will in all things. Sir John will make provision for feeding, clothing and accommodation and for burial in the event of death. You understand? Master. Yes, Master. The employment contracts of their day... Chris. Yes, Master. These indentures were cut down the middle... Get that off. Thank you. ..creating two pieces which could be matched up to prove authenticity. With your pouches, keep them I didn't read the contract. 
<laughs> I just signed it, as I always do with contracts. So can you quit? Can you go, I'm, I've had enough? It's till death. We're done. It. Having signed his fair share of contracts, footballer Jermaine is taking his new job seriously. I definitely want to win it. I don't want to lose. I mean, it's a laugh and it's all a bit of fun and stuff, but at the same time, like, yeah, I don't want to go on the losing side. I like this so far a thousand times more than Elizabethan, where our lord and lady, I felt, were worthless twits. <laughs> the things you can see here now, the lord and lady in the Elizabethan time seem to just be people who swanned about doing nothing, whereas yeah. our lord here is actually going to go into a joust yeah, and actually risk himself. Yes. In this time period, I actually have status, I have the ability to go up the ranks. It's like a, a job in the 21st century, you get a chance of promotion. And if he wins, we get rewarded. Yeah, OK, sure. guys. We'll make sure he wins. This is now definitely competition. Yeah. Like a Formula One pit crew, the Squire's work is at the heart of their night's success. We tend to think of jousts as purely physical events, but the decision on who to declare the winner of a tournament like this one was dependent on far more than just the joust itself. Everything from the look of the knight and his horse, the conduct of his retinue, how clean his armour was, could contribute to which knight won the day. Our only purpose is to serve the knight, because everything is geared towards this joust. Anything that we need to do, we will do to make sure he wins. The teams have just six hours to prepare for the joust. Um, well, that's a shield. The Reds are already hard at work on one of the Squire's key jobs, preparing their knight's 12-foot wooden lance. Yellow and blue stripes, do you think, guys? Yeah. So who's the most artistic out of everybody Kirsty. here? Kirsty. Kirsty, you're going to take responsibility of the shield? Yep. And Keith Allen is starting to feel competitive. Our strategy is to do the work that is required, do it to the best of our ability. That's what we do. You're looking at a team of winners over here. While the Reds are already hard at work... I'm a bit scared of the horses. ..the Blacks are still dividing up the jobs. Shall we do our menu to do horses? Louise and Fern set to work on the knight's precious steed. We've divided up with them looking after the knight and us looking after the horses. I think, hopefully, that should be about right. Here you go, here's the While Jermaine gets to grips with his knight's kit. I ain't got a clue what any of the names were for any parts of the armour. This is going straight on my head, I'll tell you that much. Are we going to be better? Simple, we're going to win. Ah! These jousting horses were called Destrias. Often weighing over 70 stone, they were the most expensive piece of a knight's equipment. This horse is probably worth more than we are. Oh, definitely. This is Sir John's McLaren F1 car. Come here. Good boy. Louise takes charge. I have a bit of experience with horses um, and horse riding. I know there's quite a lot of work to be done, but I've got a uh, brilliant assistant, Fern. I'm quite struck by how dirty this horse is. She's been rolling in it, hasn't she? Yes, I know. Fern, there's a little bit of mud around his hooves. I'm not quite satisfied with that one, Fern. Well, let me just finish this bit first, mate. God! <laughs> Do you know, I really hope that the others have a grey horse as well, or else we've got a lot of work to do that they won't have to well, do. that's true. If we'd had that black one... Yeah. It would have taken us half yeah, the time. Yeah, that would come up gleaming, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. Fern, that it's not good enough, some of these bits on the haunches. I was doing my best there. I feel rather deflated now. What are you sitting down? I'm not feeling good just now. So Louise said to me, Fern, this isn't good enough. And I thought, <laughs> Fern, yes? I don't want any, you know, upset you or anything. I cleaned out all the shit here, all the shit outside, all the shit off his body. I can't believe your language. What are you plaiting? That's lovely. I'll just dab into the shit round the back where I'm going to get... Yeah, there's a bit, to be honest, there's a bit more down there. It's 1468, and the time crashers are working as male squires. Like Robocop. They have just five hours left to ready rival knights for a joust this afternoon. In the red camp, Kirsty is already hard at work on her knight's shield. That's looking great, Kirsty. Thank you. 
The shield is where the knights will aim their lances, known as the targe from the French word for target. It's Sir Henry's crest, so I'm trying to make it look as much like it looks on the flag. The targe carried the knight's coat of arms. It advertised his success, his prowess, his brand, in effect. It was an essential part of his credibility. I want to keep it fierce and ugly and not look like Bambi. I think we're working really well as a team. Uh, we've all got our different skills. Um, and we're all kind of expressing ourselves harmoniously. In the black camp, <coughs> oh. the job of polishing their knight's armour... Pretty hard. <laughs> ..falls to comedian Chris, actor Charlie and footballer Jermaine. Wrong side. Yeah, no, it's not crutch, that. Crutch and oh, no, no, hold on, no, look. A knight's armour was made up of body-hugging sections of heat-treated and hardened plate steel. And that's the right arm there. Oh, yeah. Cutting-edge medieval technology it was specifically designed to protect against lance impacts. I can't imagine it's particularly comfortable to wear this stuff. I mean, it's heavy and it's not padded. It's heavy. You, you won't be able to move. No. But I don't think that's the idea, to be honest with you. I think, Maybe I think not. the idea is to not get a bit of wood through your chest. The violence and danger of the joust made knights the celebrities of their day, if they survived. It's almost kind of better to just remain a squire to an extent. No, because you want the glory want of the, winning at this. Imagine if you were a footballer in yeah. the 21st century. It's a bit like yeah, that, imagine I imagine. That. If you can imagine that. If you can imagine that, yeah. the kind of like. prestige that yeah. would be. Yeah. The kind of money you'd get and fame. <laughs> <laughs> just a minute. In the Black Camp stables... You're putting hay on everything I've just brushed. Well, I just think you're not going to dry otherwise, Fern. <sighs> Louise and Fern are still at loggerheads. You know what? We've got work to do. And I, what do you mean, we? I've just... No, I know what now. I'll do hooves again. Bottoms of hooves. I beg your pardon. You... Well, I've just done all what that and I was going to go round again. <laughs> do some work! <laughs> I got all the big shit off him. No, you did! did his tummy, did his back legs, and not... he kept lifting up all the other ones, trying to get in... I'm the... not saying you didn't do a bad job. We just need to do a better one. I think she thinks I'm dawdling. And I think she's racing on to the next step without sorting out the first one first, so... But I am the novice, so I appreciate that I'm probably in the wrong. Time is ticking on, but there may be a more serious problem in the black camp. Now, Sir John has expressed a concern that he may not be well enough for the joust. I'll do it. Do what? I'll joust. That's not the question, son. Fair enough. This is a Jordan of Sir John's urine. Are you glad he just put his hand up? <laughs> what I need you to do is to take it to the barber surgeon to have it checked. Well, I know what this place is from the sign. The sign of the barber surgeon. It is interesting how these signs develop, isn't it? Originally, to show that he did bloodletting, the barber surgeon would leave a bowl of blood outside the front, then it became blooded bandages, and, and finally the much more discreet red and white twist. Of the barber's pole, yeah. Exactly. In medieval times, there were very few trained physicians, but there were plenty of barbers skilled with sharp instruments. So as well as cutting hair, barber surgeons performed bloodletting, could pull out teeth, or even slice off a limb. Hello. I've got a, um, about, probably about half a pint of uh, Sir John's urine to be tested. Urine played a key role in medieval medicine. Firstly, we must check the colour. Oh, OK, cool. Look a good colour to you? I think it's he's slightly dehydrated. They believed there were 24 varieties of urine identified by look and smell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it smells lovely. Well, this indicates that he's slightly excessive in yellow bile and blood. It's a little too much. However, both of those make a good combative knight. It is a good thing for a fight. Cool. So he's all right? Is... Oh, yes. You're looking a little peaky, though. May I suggest a little bloodletting? I'm probably all right for bloodletting, actually. In the red stables... Does that feel good? Actress Kirsty is in her element. I have eight horses and I've got experience brushing them, cleaning them. She may be a Hollywood star, 
but the life of a squire suits her down to the ground. I have a horse named Mikey that is black like this and friendly like this. Getting to dress Hawthorne is the best thing I've done so far. He's an amazing horse. He's got a lot of hair, Liz, which is good. He's going to be shiny. This is a great job. This is an honorable job. Get to work with animals. You're going to win, aren't you, buddy? I love this period. Keith and Greg have to carry out essential maintenance on their knight's armor. Morrow, Master Armorer. Good day, sirs. We've been sent across to tell you that these um... rivets need tightening. Yes. These articulations are very loose. Yeah, this will not do. This will not do. A full suit of armor was made of 80 individually crafted plates of metal held together by rivets. This is the shoulder defense, the pauldron. It must allow full movement of the left arm. Too tight and the armor won't move. Too loose and sections could slip, leaving the knight dangerously exposed. You have to strike a balance, which requires skill and patience. So we'll set you to task over here. Uh, uh, are we doing it? Yes, I'm busy. Oh. That's it. Work steadily and check with the leather, just so it nips. Long jumper Greg is determined to do the job well. I've dreamt of owning armour of my own since I was a little boy, so um, I really like this. I loved sport more than anything else, but history was another subject that, that I put everything into. As a child, I was always fascinated by knights and people riding around on horses and archers firing arrows and all that sort of thing. So when I was growing up, I'd always be in the garden, been sword fights with my older brother and, and just sort of really trying to live that period. My inner geek is sort of going absolutely mental at the moment because the fact that I'm getting to handle armour is, is really good. Repairs made. Thank you, Master Armour. The Reds can finally begin the mammoth task of polishing. It's got to be cooked by now, mate. You're going to dry it out. The time crashers have now been working for several hours on an empty stomach. Oh, Master. Right, stop what you're doing. The food is over there. But it's mid-morning, and everyone must stop for the main meal of the day. <coughs> start dishing out plates and stuff. Attendance... I'm going to just tie this bit up. ..is compulsory. I just want to make sure that he's looking beautiful. Wash your hands and have your food. It wasn't a difficult instruction. I hadn't taken on board that eating was part of my job, like responsibility. In Catholic medieval England, breaking fast could only happen after the monasteries had completed mass. So the first meal of the day was at 11 a.m. Please want some bread? Yes, please. Like so many activities in the medieval world, eating was an intimately communal affair. People shared much more than we do nowadays, didn't they? Cutlery, goblets, plates. They even slept and bathed communally. Yeah, and that's what you see in the archaeology. People sharing long benches like this at meals. <laughs> You'd only really have an individual chair if you're someone really important, like a king or a lord, and that's why thrones are so important. Early in the next century, sharing baths and other communal activities was to fall out of favour when syphilis swept through England. In 1468, the squires may be sharing cutlery, but it's still a pretty privileged life. For our breakfast, we're having beef, salt, bread and wine. Oh, yeah, wine. If you could afford meat in the medieval world, then a vegetable wouldn't have crossed your lips. Which is tough for a strict vegetarian like socialite Meg. Ugh. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah. It's so oh, beautiful. The best bit is the coagulated blood. So, Meg, do you want some fruit? Thank you. I'm going to get my team some food, because they don't eat meat. So it's only right. Knights and squires lived by a strict moral code. Helping a damsel in distress may seem gentlemanly. And maybe some plums, squire. But taking food without asking could be punishable by death. Excuse me, boys, that stuff oh. belongs to you. No, no, no. Put it back on stealing, innit? You can do what I like. Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Yes. I, uh, I work for... Well, I'm a squire. Who's your boss? Where is he? Over you bring there. him to me. Me? Bring him to me. Go and get him yourself. I'm not going over there. I'm sure that will go down well. He can go f himself.
1468, and two teams of rival time crashers are preparing to go head to head in a medieval joust. But Squire Keith Quick, Meg. has been caught stealing fruit for vegetarian Meg Matthews, and he's disrespected a superior. Just eat it quick. Don't let him see it. Keith. Master, you are learning the art of chivalric, gentlemanly behaviour. Courtesy is one of those prime skills. Understood. Manners are essential. Of course. Shall I seek him out and apologise? Yes, I will do that. While Meg enjoys her ill-gotten fruit... Oh. This gentleman has something to say to you. Keith has to grovel. I've obviously forgotten my manners and the courtesy that I should extend to you, and for that I'm terribly sorry. Well, that's very good. We'll remove your hat in future. Certainly, sir. Well, I hope that your conduct will be much improved on the field of chivalry later on. It will undoubtedly, sir. Very good. Dismissed. Thank you for the lesson. You enter the whole sport on chivalric terms. So you've got to maintain that sense of chivalry. So I was a bit out of order there. Knights and squires were actually expected to live by the code of chivalry. It was a religious, moral, social system that required them to be honourable at all times. Although we think of being honourable and chivalric as doing things like being gallant to ladies. But in those times, it also meant hacking your enemy's head off if you were ordered to. They were the contract killers of their day. The armour's all done, so what do we need to do now? In less than two hours, the joust will begin. Squires! Uh-oh. We have a lot to do. We've fallen behind. The shields aren't painted, lances aren't painted. The Reds have raced ahead. Kirsty is already putting the finishing touches to their shield, while the squires in the black camp have barely started theirs. With the clock ticking, Charlie and Chris must work out for themselves what to put on the shield. Charlie, do you want to do the shield? Do you want me to? Yeah, right. I think you've got the steadier hand, mate. And what do you think I should do? Just do the circle. If we're red hot there, then do a circle, a gold leaf circle. Do you not think he's going to want the emblem on there, Chris? Which one? This thing on there. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. No, he's totally wrong. That's the retinue's livery badge. The shield should be carrying the knight's coat of arms, a winged heart. So let me get some paint first. Christ, my eyes off a small guy. No, no, no. It's so bad. In the red camp, the shield is finished, so Kirsty can get to work in the stables. The horse has to look as perfect as possible, and the plaiting has to be as flat as possible. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas. There's a lot of farm country around. I can ride horses. I've milked cows. I've mucked stalls. I know, brother. And I've always fancied myself someone who could live in time periods fairly easily. The knight gets what the knight needs. There we go. During the joust, the horse was like a walking billboard for the knight's coat of arms. You hold this bit, you know, darling. You know. Hold this bit, darling. But only if dressed correctly. In the black camp, Fern and Louise are finding it a struggle. No, no, darling. We... No. This is the front, sweetheart. No, but he's just... No. Honestly, Fern, he's... Shush. With the joust looming, the pressure's on. He says it's on the bottom. No. Well, I suggest that you find out between yourselves. Discuss it, decide what to do, figure it out and do it, because we're yeah. running out of time we're, with the red we team are, right We ahead. are discussing it. Fern set off to do a little light espionage in the red stable. Squire. Meg! Squire Kirsty! How's it going today? Squire Fern just poked us now in, you know, while I was um, polishing. I've come to. Um... Oh, that's an interesting thing. Can we borrow that afterwards? Uh, maybe now I'll just check in to see how we go. They might be under pressure, I don't know. For Fern, it's mission accomplished. It's right, shush. Got it. This covers his tail up to here. What, the it smaller says... one is round his neck. Oh, I and knew. we'll find the way of doing it. OK, well done. I knew that. That was the best option, Fern. Well done. I know the other team has tried to spy on us and get information, but whatever. 
we'd have made the decision we're not paying any attention to what they're doing because we don't care. One hour to go. First, our griefs. For the Reds, time to dress their knight in full body armor. Look at it. There you go. Good work. Yeah. Leaving any part exposed. Oh dear. Could prove fatal. I guess this is where most wounds occur, you know, and I, it's probably a timely reminder to have the armor in tip top condition, because if it's not, this is what happens. In 1468. That feels like a knee, yeah. Plate armor could cost the equivalent of £150,000 in today's money. Uh, there's no hole there, it's just a rivet. Oh, OK. Fitting it was a three man job. Obviously, it has to be on very, very tightly, and then trying to move leather and metal isn't easy at all. Let's just <laughs> get over there. That man's life is in your hands, basically. Wow. If you mess up, there's a chance that you could die. All squires, I want you out here now. Yes, yes master. master. Now, I yes, said. Yes, 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 master. Well, follow me, then. The Blacks are miles behind. Arming squires, we have a meeting with Sir John. Sir John. The knight isn't happy. My armour will need another clean as it's covered in ash. Must speed everything up. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Carry on. After spending hours polishing the armour, the team have left it uncovered next to an open fire. I need it doing now before we get on the field. Do you understand? Yes, master. I'll do that again. They can't even begin to dress their knight in his armour until comedian Chris has repolished every last piece. Carry on. OK, come on, let's finish this horse. Finish up our horse. Do we deserve the telling off, to be honest with you? We are way behind. <coughs> That's fine. Just do that. Already dressed and prepared to joust. Good. Fantastic. The Red Knight. I'm incredibly jealous that I didn't have a chance to stick on a suit of armour myself, actually. It's incredible. What's interesting is that some of the weapons, the lances, for example, are actually being superseded by 1468, aren't they? I mean, jousting begins as training for the battlefield, but combat's changing. In 1468, you've got the beginnings of modern warfare with cannon and guns and gunpowder. And in the Wars of the Roses, we're seeing men and horses and castles falling to artillery. The hour of the joust has arrived. The crowds have gathered, and the Lord and Lady hosting the tournament have taken their places. We are here and we are ready. The opposition haven't even taken to the field. They're unprepared. Very good. Then, um... But the Black Knight still isn't dressed. Firstly, I will need my, my greaves. Chris has finally finished polishing the armour, but there's no time left to fit it. That's what I Isn't thought. It the shorter? How about you got the left and the right wrong? So the joust is looming, squires. Yes. Right, right. Squires, move yourselves! Your team are ready! <laughs> the joust is about to begin but only the Reds have taken to the field. Our master squire told us that being late was unacceptable, and it's rude. 30 minutes late, the Blacks finally make an appearance. We're waiting. Stand, stand, stand. Where's the shield? This is the retinue's news heraldry. Look at the banner. A heart and some wings. That is Sir John's heraldry. You have done it wrong, which means we can't even use that. Perfect. With ground to make up, the blacks parade their banner to try and win the support of the crowd. The squire's performance is almost as important as the knight's. And the Reds spot an opportunity what they do. to upstage their rivals. Red retinue, by the left, quick march. Left, right. The person left. they really need to impress isn't the Lord, it's his lady. Protecting high status women was at the heart of chivalry. 
and noble women were often afforded the privilege of judging tournaments. The squires must pull out all the stops to win her favour. All we can do is do our best for our master and hope that he triumphs and uh, we receive the just rewards. You know, why am I talking like this? Sweet <laughs> Dad, don't talk like this. <laughs> Red retinue, halt! My lords, ladies, it is a pleasure to be here. Three cheers for Sir Henry! He's had a call like a disco there. <laughs> a bit annoyed. Time for the joust. The lance ready. The weapon ready. As rack operator, it's Fern's job to check the lance before passing it to weapon captain Louise. For the Reds, Meg readies the lance for Kirsty. Guys, lance. Once his visor's down, the knight can only see straight ahead, so the lance must be guided precisely into his gauntlet. Stay on it, guys. Come on, let's keep focused. The joust will see the knights charge past each other three times. They must strike each other hard enough to shatter their lances, so the knights must display both strength and accuracy. What's the point scoring? OK, it's three to the shield, yep. two to the body, one to the arm, illegal to the head. Good luck, Sir Henry. Good luck, John! Yeah. 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 They're not messing around out there. Jousting is a, is a war game. After the first charge, it's a dead heat, but there are still two more passes to decide the winner. Wow, oh, a good hit for both. So they both hit the shields. Top score. Three all. It wasn't unusual for knights to die at these events. In 1520, King Henry VIII held a tournament with the King of France. There were elaborate precautions, but nevertheless, a French knight was killed, tragically, by his own brother. As long as the knights are deadlocked, the squire's every move becomes more significant. Let's hear it for Sir John! Woo! Let's get those lances ready, guys. Any slip-ups risk losing the ladies' favour. Now, I've got to keep it upright and high. Passing a knight his lance... Right, so ready. ..must be done with haste. Uh, he's ready and waiting. He's ready and waiting. They haven't got their look, they haven't got their lance ready. And the handover has to go smoothly to avoid spooking his steed. For the first time, the Reds are in trouble. Oh, this is bad. This is awful. Kirst is trying not only the knight's patience, but the ladies too. We blow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There you are. He's ready, they're charging. Look at this. Look at this. Go on, Sam Green! Come on, Come on! Come on! Although the lances struck, they failed to shatter. Oh, this is tense. This was called an attaint and meant no score for either knight. It's still three all. With just one pass remaining, the squires need to win the favour of the crowd, whose support could sway the ladies' opinion. This is all to play for, so I need you to be sharp, sharp, sharp. Give us everything we can okay. to win. Acting as banner bearer for the Black Knight. Give me some of this! Yes! Comedian Chris. Yes, indeed! Are we prepared to let that red fool take the point? No! Leave the field! The horses wish to fight, sir! Ignore the old fool! Disgusting behaviour. Standing in a dangerous position. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unknightly, unchivalrous. I absolutely smashed that cheer, and there's no way Keith Allen beat me a cheer, and the little hobbit man, not a chance. There's one final pass 
before the lady will choose her champion. Keep them cheering. I want them cheering as soon as we move. Lances struck the body at two points apiece. It's a dead heat, five all. So victory rests entirely on the lady's opinion of the squire's performance. That's why the role of the time crashers is so important, isn't it? Because depending on, on how well they've done the horses up, how well they've polished the armor, that is going to affect what the lady thinks. I think we were definitely up there. I mean, our horses were so much better. And I think we did a great job with the lances, so I think we've still got a good chance. I think we held it all together. Our manners yep. were in, our yep. chivalry was in. We worked like clockwork. Yeah. I think our yes. showmanship at the beginning as well. Super. Very good. Oh, oh, yeah. While the lady considers her verdict... Red retinue by the left, quick march. Lift, 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 right, lift. Chris has one last stab at winning favour. My lady, you are a vision to behold. May I say, Lord, you are a very, very lucky man. Thank you very much indeed. Decision time. Has the Reds stumble with the Lance tipped the balance in favour of their rivals? The Lady of the Just has decided. Or will the Blacks' late arrival onto the field cost them dear? That the victor of this noble joust is... Sir Henry Stewart! <laughs> it's victory for the Reds. <laughs> I feel like I just got an Academy Award. This is one of the best days of my life. God, it's brilliant. It's just brilliant. I mean, really, in your face. It was brilliant. <laughs> that was great, yeah. I would do this one again. Uh, like... Every day. Let's just stay here forever. <laughs> Time for the Blacks. That's off. To face the music. I'm more disappointed than I can tell you. All that adrenaline and testosterone is coursing through me, and it's like, oh, oh. Everything that you have done today has been mediocre. Why? I don't Why? think you were pulling your weight. Oh, now, I gave you an opportunity yeah, later on when says that about to your work. be quiet, Chris. What? No, I'm not having to shut up and listen instead of arguing. Your punishment will be, while they're having a good time, you are going to get my lord out of his armour and you're going to clean it again. You're going to clean the horses again. And you're also going to clean the rest of this camp. Move! There was no pat on the back for second place in 1468. There was no congratulations, you tried your best. There was only, you lost, now get out. If that is the reality, that you can do your job absolutely to the best of your abilities and then be told that everything you've done is rubbish, <laughs> that's not such a great place to live, is it? The winning squire's reward, a lesson in sword fighting. Skills which will take them one step closer to becoming a knight. I'll be gentle. To get to be a boy, to get to be a man, was fun. <laughs> For me, it's a boyhood dream to live a day in the medieval world. <gasps> and finally, today, I got to do it. <laughs> ah, no, I went different. I need to go round first. Okay. Everything was much, much better being a squire in medieval times against being kitchen staff in the Tudor times. There's no comparison. I very much hope wherever we crash to next, we're slightly higher up in society because you do get a much nicer ride from it.
It's the end of a chapter for our time crashers, with some of them feeling victorious and others downright defeated. What are we going to do with these contracts? I'm going to burn mine. Yeah, I'm not going to need this as a resume for my next job. In a way, it's the end of a chapter for knights, too. No longer the sole champions of the battlefield, they could have been consigned to history, but they weren't. Artillery had already begun to change the face of warfare, but the chivalry and pageantry of knights lived on at the joust, and it would remain the sport of nobles and kings for another 150 years. 1468, then. What do we think? Amazing. Best day of my life. Yeah. So where are we going next? Where are we going? Hopefully so much fun. Next time, it's 1913, and the ten famous faces crash into an Edwardian stately home. Oh, my goodness! It's better than Tudor Britain. I don't know if you felt these beds. They may think they're in Downton Abbey, but the reality of a life in service... I am talking... Gently. That is such a dire thing to happen at a tea party. Could make this their toughest ordeal yet. It's like Mission Impossible. No, no! Ah! Ah!